All right, howdy everyone. Welcome back to the video. In today's video, we are going to be doing manual labor. Okay, so I kind of thought I would put together a video that can maybe be a guide for anybody looking to host a match or even for those of you guys that do shoot matches. Like, what sort of goes on behind the scenes with regards to setting up a match, planning a match, making sure it's not too difficult. Like, how do you determine the size of the plates? And this can be really helpful too for you if you want to set up something for yourself to practice on what size plates you should have. And I'm gonna give you guys a little tool that I like to use um, to set up matches and sort of determine the difficulty level. And that tool seems to, to check out too. So first of all, it's about just after eight o'clock Friday morning, the, I don't know what the date is, um, 23rd of October. So despite the fact that the match is more than a week away, this is about the second time that I've actually come out to the range to just make sure that sort of everything that I'd planned back at the office is gonna play out. And as I said, this thing actually starts back at the office and that process started about a month ago. Sort of trying to puzzle together what sort of the terrain features allow and then you come out to the range and you actually visually see, okay, well, I thought we could shoot over all the way over there but in reality, you actually can't see that because there's a big bush in front of you or whatever. So that's sort of the stuff you have to put together. Um, we're not working on a whole flat range. There's different aspects. And the firing line sort of got this curve, so we need to make sure from a safety perspective, we're also safe. Okay, so behind me, you'll see Google Earth. Um, now, what I really like about Google Earth is you can measure things, okay? You can put little markers down for your stages, and I color code them, which works really well. And it gives you sort of a good initial outlay of what your stages are going to be like, the terrain you're working with, and the distances. It really gives you a good sort of rule of thumb. And that kind of then brings you to your next step, which is physically building your props. Now, I'm going to use some of the features in the landscape for a few of my stages, but some of the stages are going to be artificial stages. I've got some tree stumps over there from some trees that the wind's blown over. I'm going to put up this little gate thing over here. We're going to use those brick sort of structures at the back there, which is going to be super fun but i'm gonna need to sort of elevate the shooters a little bit to get them to be able to get to the top there so that's something we have to build today so quite a bit happening and i try and build out my firing line first okay because then visually when you're down range and you're setting up your targets it's a little bit easier to range back to an axle structure to get ranges and stuff than to try and range from this way there it's also visually easier from the target side to look back through my rangefinder to see if i can actually see the obstacle because if the two can see each other then we're golden now without further ado let's build this first structure so it does not help that my body is super sore from the past couple of days of working out so today's going to be a very long day but it's all for a good cause now when it comes to sort of building obstacles in this country at least we generally go for wobbly um, i know on some of the ranges in the u.s the stuff is super static and set up it's super stable but here a little bit of wobble goes a long way <laughs> and personally i like this style more than like something that's super rock solid because here you're gonna you know you gotta know what you're doing to get super stable here Now I'll probably cable tie these two additional ones just to get it a little bit more stable but I mean that we're gonna shoot at about 500 yards here I think about 550 so right so something else I like to do is to just visually see from this side sort of how the obstacle feels um, and if I can see the target from here too and there is sort of a target or uh, a sort of a landmark really of where I'm gonna be placing that target. I'm gonna make a note of that on my phone. And uh, let's see if we can see that. Obviously this rifle is safe. Okay, no problem seeing that. Let's check out this lower position of the two. Woo -hoo! <laughs> There's a lot of wobble here. This one to see that. Cool, no problem there. And then if I do decide to add a prone position to this, let me just double check that too. Uh, and we should be good to go there too. I, I'm, I'm sure about that. Let's go there. By the way, this morning when I got here, the last time I was here, I left this game changer out in the field and I happened to, it happened to catch my eye this morning. So super glad I got this guy back. 
Ah, oh, my body is so sore. That's gonna work perfect. Okay, one stage at least on this side of the firing line done. Now I gotta sort out that side, but I kinda, as I said earlier, I build out the whole firing line and then we take it from there. What? <laughs> Holy moly, that bird gave me a fright. I think they've got a nest in here. Uh, hello, anybody home? Uh, no, they ducked for the day. Um, okay, so this was one of those things that I've always wanted to shoot off. And this weekend we will. So there's no roof on this. That roof's over there. The wind took that. There's a roof on that one. But now what I need is I need some sort of thing to put here. Because as you can see... A tippy toes is not going to cut it here. So I'm thinking there's some hay bales over there, but they they're far, and yeah, a hay bale should do it. So this is going to suck, Ugh, and I need two of them. Next time you bitch and moan to your math director about a stage, this is the stuff that happens behind the scenes. Woo! Let's go. Right, should probably have worn pants. Um, quite a few stickily prickly things down there. Rich, let's get the next one. Right, so <clears throat> with hindsight being 2020. Uh, it probably would have been wise for me to do this at the end of the day because now Especially because I carried it on my back It's gonna be a pretty itchy pretty itchy day um, All right, let's see I can work with that ooh, 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 ooh. Boom boom boom, okay, should be fine Boom 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 Woo! Okay, so some time has passed since we last saw each other. What I've been doing now is taking off steel um, from sort of the other frames that we won't be shooting in the competition just to avoid the guys, you know, having target confusion when they're on the stage and there's targets freaking everywhere. So what I'm doing now is just ripping these guys off and then I'll circle back and start adding targets to the correct distances and everything. We've still got some stages to build. Uh, one, we built three already, some of them are prone, there's other obstacles that are in place, so we still have basically one stage to fetch these three big bins with, um, and that should be a really fun stage. But yeah, for now, just while I sort of wait for that trailer to free up, um, just ripping these targets off. Now, what I'm really excited about too, is I've actually had new targets made, because um, the strap bolt thing, it's really not a long-term solution because that's that's what ends up happening and you really struggle to get these off and the more you work with them the more you cut your fingers um, it's just not pleasant so we're gonna go very much the American system with like um, uh, these t-posts that you hammer into the ground and then we've made brackets from hardened steel and that should make this job so much easier going forward so I'm super excited about that however those targets are not ready They'll be here, I think this afternoon. So I'll probably build about 90% of the range and come back either Monday and just sort those out. But maybe I'll even show you guys that. I'm not sure yet. It depends when I need to get this video up. Okay, I've had to break out the big sun hat. We've got two big targets set up over there. Those are gonna be at like 700 ish meters. We've got this guy over here from last weekend's competition. So we need to take that um, target, put it on that frame over there, respray that, pack up this frame. Gets pretty complicated pretty quickly, um, especially because when you're sort of up at the firing line or, or at the targets, it's quite difficult to sort of get your bearings. Um, so I use Google Earth on my phone and that works relatively well and I also have a little page of notes that I can reference. But yeah, pretty much there's a 
at the end when you sort of start wrapping things up there's a whole bunch of driving back and forth um, to make sure everything is hunky dory um, I want to give a massive shout out to MDT for sponsoring today's video if you guys want to pump out your rifle like the rifle you saw right at the beginning of this video that's an MDT ESS you can shop that now at mdttech.com okay so uh, I guess I gotta do this there's no easy way I'm gonna pack you guys away this is I feel the sweat running down my brow and the sweat dropped down my brow that's not how the lyrics go but this is a family show <laughs> right so I pretty much finished putting up all the targets I have pulled the rest of the stages I kind of just wanted to get it done it's been been a long day in the Sun uh, luckily the winds come up so it's not quite as warm anymore what I'm doing now I'm double checking my sort of Google Earth measurements uh, on the satellite with the actual rangefinder from every position and this is sort of the second to last step uh, and then I'll do one more sweep of the whole course of fire so let's just double check these oh and what I'm also trying to do now I'm going like is this a realistic shot for me and I'm gonna redo that with my rifle going forward uh, I've never done that before but what I want to do for this shoot it's so difficult sometimes you you know you think you look at it on paper and you go like yeah that's that's doable but what I want to do now is I actually want to put my rifle in position on sort of the props make doubly sure especially here there's like a little crest before this first target just to make sure that when you actually get down there into position that you can actually see those targets so let's see here so I pop these distances into my iPhone on the notes app and when I get home I can actually drop my matchbook and I know the distances will check out I still ask the competitors on the day to range everything because I can make a mistake let's double check that back one 670 so Google Earth is kind of there uh, it's about five meters out but you know it's there or there about 670 okay boom on to the next one okay oh man right back in the car I only smokes my order like those um it's been a hell of a long morning uh, there's two just from the sort of initial ranging session like there's two targets that are too small um, So I'm gonna wait for our new targets to come to put those up. So the course of fire is about I'd say 95% there um, There's one of these targets. We sort of have to thread and There's one of these targets where you sort of got to thread the needle between a willow tree and like another tree and the targets only like 200 meters behind that um, and I did I think I did a very good job judging it from there because there's no landmark on this side um, When I set that up, but it's on the third position. It's a little it's it just needs to come over like three meters and a, and like two meters back So I'm gonna drive up there do that quickly And then I'm gonna come back and just do a quick walkthrough with my rifle Obviously empty clean rifle not shooting the course of fire not that I'll be competing for the win at this match anyway um, I actually don't have the rifle the right rifle at the moment these distances are a little bit and especially looking at the forecast the wind's gonna pump I might shoot the 223 for fun but um, yeah I like playing match director a lot and I like seeing other people have a good time at my matches that's more important to me than actually shooting the match um, anyway so I need to go move that target a little bit and uh, yeah, then we're going to do a walkthrough just make sure doubly sure we can see everything and I should be able to have a good sort of reference a frame of reference I guess um, for sort of how the positions feel is it doable do some of the targets need to to be made even bigger but I think we've got a good balance obviously you don't have want to have any gimme targets but uh, yeah I really try and cater my matches for you know the the intermediate shooter I want the novice shooter to go home having hit some steel you know I've been to some um, some matches where guys go home hitting nothing um, and then they don't have any gun problems so I, I want people to go home with points I don't really care this sounds cruel the good guys are gonna do well regardless okay so I don't really build my matches for them I build the match for those sort of people in the middle because they the vast majority of the people at the match anyway and I want them to have a good time so without further ado I'm gonna go move that target come back and then we'll do a little quick walk and talk I'm starving by the way um, it's now almost two o'clock been here the whole day I'm starving I should have packed some bultong but I thought it would go quicker but it's it's been a bit of a 
it's been a bit of a long day uh, anyway let me go move that guy okay so I just did the walkthrough of the rifle I always start a timer on my phone so that I know okay the positions are doable within the time and how I'm feeling now like super down low energy I was still able to sort of uh, like drag myself through most of it um, unfortunately the target I went to move just now I moved it too far now you can't see it at all so third time lucky I guess hopefully please I need food I really hope this is the last time Precision with a hammer. I'm just kidding. I suck with a hammer. <laughs> Lift it. There we go. Right. This is very close to where I was the first time, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna pray that that's good. Now, don't go. This whole system really doesn't work great when the soil is super hard. Luckily now, this is soft. Um, but I guess I could get a bigger hammer. But yeah, anyway. So the new system will, this whole system will be redundant essentially. Wonder how many people in the comments are gonna analyze my hammer swing. <laughs> Woo! Almost hit myself on the hammer. Oh dude. My arms are so sore. That should be good enough. From yesterday's workout, every time I like lift the hammer, my whole forearm is cramping. That because I'm taking a hit. Ow! 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 <laughs> that was really painful. So, if you're still watching, thank you. And if you're in South Africa, you can get that link down below. Looks pretty damn cool. Alrighty, so back where we started this morning, uh, the winds come up as you can see. Uh, this match is going to be a lot of fun. I think this is the coolest match that I've ever set up. Um, and I, I'm really looking forward to hearing how and seeing how the shooters handle the obstacles we've presented them. Um, also really excited to see how the new target system performs. By the way, if the energy level in this video sort of went like this, <laughs> That's sort of how I felt during the making of this video. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching. Check out some of our other NRL matches over here. We're going to have a video crew here for this weekend. So I'm super excited to bring you this match. You'll be able to see actually the, the guys shooting this match. Check out my precision rifle course that's going to be down here. And if you haven't already, what are you doing? Subscribe down here. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.